Sky News yesterday were interviewing uh, an eco uh, activist um, and basically sort of justifying uh, the eco protests we've seen uh, day after day uh, in this uh, in this month a whole month of protests we've seen for eco activists just stop oil and others we've seen protests on the streets bridges closed roads closed we've seen arts of uh, works of art repeatedly damaged with stuff thrown over them, paint thrown over everywhere, because, you know, we have to save the planet from climate catastrophe, don't we? Of course we do. Well, the latest uh, uh, protests have seen environmental activists throwing a chocolate cake in the face of King Charles's waxwork at Madame Tussauds in central London. Ailey uh, McFadden and Tom Johnson, both in their 20s, being investigated on suspicion of criminal damage after they stepped over the barrier, a uh, smeared cake on the model, valued at uh, over £200,000, and took four months to create. Um, they're just the latest activists. But isn't it getting, A, a little bit tiresome, and B, very frustrating uh, that we are watching these activists seemingly get away with, let's face it, what is, quite clearly, vandalism. Let's talk to Donica McCarthy. He's an environmental activist and joins us. Good morning to you, Donica. Sorry, I'm the climate economist for The Independent. Is that what you that's want that's to be described? I'm so sorry. I've got, I've got um, environment, climate, com that, then that's what I mean. You are both, but there we are. We'll, we'll put that in. Um, but Donica, um, you support what these protesters are doing, don't you? Yes, I think we haven't had enough of it. That's the problem. If we had uh, Insulate Britain back in 2012, we might have had, the Daily Mail might have not succeeded in destroying the government's home insulation programme. What that has meant, we, then we were insulating two and a half million homes a year. If that program had continued, 16 million families across Britain would not be facing the choice of the hour with uh, huge energy bills this winter, and many of them are facing choice between food and heating. That's the price we paid of not having the protest back in 2012. Hold on a minute. The choice that between food and heating right now is becoming is largely due to an energy crisis, which is largely due to the fact that we've tried to move stupidly fast to moving to renewable energy. I'd love us to move sorry, to renewable energy. Oh, Donica, I didn't interrupt Donica, I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't I didn't interrupt you. We we we're not able to move to one hundred percent renewable energy yet. We're not able no one sensible thinks we can do it even by twenty fifty. Eighty five percent of the world's energy is fossil fuels. If we hadn't been running down our reliance on fossil fuels, if we hadn't been if we'd been, for instance, building nuclear power stations as well we wouldn't be in this mess. Energy wouldn't be so expensive. People wouldn't have to choose between heating and eating. Julia, I think it's really important we, we base our debate on facts. Mm -hmm. The actual reason why we are currently in a crisis, it's a fossil fuel price crisis. At the moment, fossil fuel electricity produced by gas is nine times more expensive than renewable energy. So what we're facing currently is there's a global th uh, uh, interruption of the fossil fuel um, caused by the war in Ukraine. And the United Kingdom closed our gas depot, yes, our crazy. government, which is absolutely insane. And we, we, we shut down the progress towards solar and, and onshore wind. That has left us as a country more vulnerable to the, the, the Putin uh, uh, attack. And we have left millions of people, because we didn't insulate their homes, at risk of choosing between health. But even if their homes were wonderfully insulated, and you can't necessarily insulate every home, we do have a poor housing stock on that front. I completely agree with you on that. That would still not stop the fact that their, their homes are going to be cold without being able to afford to put the heating on. That wouldn't solve the fact that our energy prices are twice as high. Yes, we've absolutely been exposed in the whole of Europe. It's mostly them who've been more more exposed to uh, Russian uh, gas and the sanctions. But the, the issue here is that, you know, if, if we can't rely on wind and solar power because they're intermittent, so we need to have the backup. Wind and solar power, the cost of it needs to include having the backup of the nuclear power stations and the gas storage and the gas power stations and the, ele the other electricity supply. And, and you never include that when you talk about how well, cheap they are. They're I'm not sorry. cheap. Sorry, I, I haven't bought a single kilowatt of electricity or gas since last April. Day and night, my home is supplied by renewable energy. My home is well insulated, so I, my need for energy is radically reduced. And so therefore, if we do that for poor people across Britain and require the rich to insulate and, and put in renewable energy, we put Britain in a significant better state, both economically and from in terms of climate. What kind of home do you live in? 
I live in an old 1840s terrace house. You live in a house. Hu- millions of people in this country, including myself, live in flats. I'm, I'm not quite sure how you're going to insulate, you know, a whole bunch of council flats that were born in the well, 90- actually, built in the, the 1950s. I have friends who live in council flats, and since there, there has been some ha- ha- flats being insulated by councils, and they say they're, 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 they almost never have to put on the heating because they're council flats have been retrofitted with insulation almost really never have to put on the heating <laughs> i do I'm, I'm sorry the idea that because you've got good insulation cavity wall insulation you'd have to put on the heating is patently nonsense you probably no, quite like living in a cold home i don't lots of people who are elderly elderly and infirm got young children um, or work from home for hours on end they can't sit in a cold home they still need to have the heating on the answer to this problem is not oh we'll insulate everyone's home and then not put the heating on the answer is having reliable um you cheap affordable secure energy yes. and that yes. and renewable agreed. energy is not yet there we are agreed that is what we need and actually at the moment you can actually look it up you with with the um off gem gas electricity is nine times more expensive than renewable electricity but that's because we subsidize renewable no, energy with the no it's not true Donna, Donna, can, no, we, no, can, we I, can we come back to the other subject i don't want to talk about that the whole time we've not got much time i want to talk about these protests using these protests so stopping whether it's stopping people in the street on the m25 going to work including ambulances and fire engines on occasion um destroying Actually, work destroying works of art, smashing a cake into uh, the waxwork at Madame Tussauds, again, a private business and uh, someone's it's artwork effectively. Um, do you think that's justified to make a case? Because we already know about this. We talk incessantly in the British media and in British politics about uh, climate change. I think far too much, frankly. Um, far, far too much. I say 99% too much. But, but there's no justification for this. It's not going to change policy. It's not going to make us talk about it anymore. So why is it necessary? Um, you just said it, we talk about it incessantly and you just said it doesn't make us talk about it anymore. Why are we talking about it right now? Because those people carried out those protests and asking whether there's a need for it. Absolutely there is. There's a democratic deficit going on on this issue. Democratic deficit? Yes. Let, let me explain that. The, the government's uh, energy, adopted energy policy was to expand nuclear, expand, uh, um, expand North Sea oil, expand fracking, not insulate and actually not do a uh, solar onshore. All the surveys of British public actually show they support the opposite. And so when you've got a situation, a democratic deficit, where the government is implementing policies demanded by the Daily Mail and the oil corporations, and the policies demanded by the public are being actually refuted, there is a democratic deficit. No, I'm and that's sorry. Historically, this is ridiculous. That's historically okay. you talk about a democratic process. Have Donica, been, have been, have if you talk the, about a democratic been, deficit, the issue is Green Party activists and others who really support, you can campaign, you can run for election, you can t- try and influence government policy. My God, you've managed to be successful influencing government policy, the insanity of the net zero policy that we're all stuck with now. Um, you said over, a minute ago that we don't change no, policy. No, no, no. no. We do change policy. No, Make no, but that mind. wasn't as a result of these protests, was it? But the point is you've already had a massive impact already, um, I think far too much. You, you know, When you stand for election... People don't vote for these policies. That's well, a democratic hang on, deficit. Hang on, hang on, Julia. Every single political party at the last general election stood on net zero, including yeah, the Yeah, we didn't get a party. choice. We didn't and, get a and choice. We, and, and the Tory party said they were going to oppose fracking and support net zero. So democratically, we voted for the part. People in Britain voted for parties with those policies. And those policies are, the government are doing the opposite of those policies. And that's why there's a democratic deficit. Do you think if there was a proper public debate and a referendum, as there was in 2016 over Brexit, that people would vote to have a less reliable, more expensive, um, uh, insecure uh, energy? I don't think they would. Yes, yes, they would vote. You they think have, they would? Yes, of course they would vote against the the current situation where we're spending a hundred billion pounds subsidizing fossil fuel day to day use. That is the opposite of conservative policy. It's the opposite of good market economics. Donica, we're going to have to leave it there. Always lively to talk to you, Donica McCarthy, climate columnist for the Independent. Hold up. 